What if there were a second generation of the internet that enabled the true peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value? We don't have that now. If I'm going to send some money to somebody else, I have to go through an intermediary, a powerful bank, a credit card company, or I need a government to authenticate who I am and who you are. What if we could do that peer-to-peer? -peer? Just a few years ago, an unknown person or persons named Satoshi Nakamoto um, came up with the Bitcoin protocol. And essentially, to me what's happening is that once again the technology genie has been unleashed from its bottle. The blockchain is basically a distributed database. Think of a giant global spreadsheet that runs on millions and millions of computers. It's distributed, it's open source, so anyone can change the underlying code and they can see what's going on. It's truly peer-to-peer. -peer. It doesn't require powerful intermediaries to authenticate or to settle uh, transactions. And it uses uh, state-of-the-art cryptography. So if we have a global distributed database that can record the fact that we've done this transaction, what else could it record? Well, it could record any structured information, pretty much. Not just who paid who, but who married who, or who owns what land, or um, what, what light bought power from what power source. In the case of the Internet of Things, we're going to need a blockchain uh, settlement system underneath. For sure, the financial services industry is up for serious disruption or transformation, depending on how they approach this issue. Um, for the research for a blockchain revolution, we went through and identified eight different things that the industry does. It moves money, it stores money, it lends money, it uh, trades money, it attests to money, it accounts for money, and so on. And every one of those can be challenged. But you pick any industry, and this technology holds huge potential to disrupt the industry, but to, to create a more prosperous world where people get to participate in the value that they create. So, for example, the music industry is a disaster, at least from the point of view of the musicians. They used to have most of the value taken by the big labels. And then along came the technology companies and the, the poor songwriters and musicians are left with crumbs at the end. What if the new music industry was a distributed app on the blockchain where I as a songwriter could post my song uh, onto the blockchain with a smart contract specifying how it is to be used. And maybe I'll say, you listen to the music, it's free. You want to put it in your movie? It's going to cost you this much, and here's how that works. And you put it in the movie, the smart contract pays me. Or how about you're going to use, a, use it for a ringtone or something. Here's the smart contract for that. This is not a pipe dream. Imogen Heap, who's the brilliant uh, 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 singer-songwriter in the UK, a best-selling um, recording artist, has now um, been part of creating Mycelia, and they're working with a, an amazing company uh, called Consensus that's all around the world, blockchain developers, using the Ethereum platform. Ethereum is one blockchain. And she's already posted her first song onto the internet. And I fully expect that many big recording artists will be seriously investigating a whole new paradigm where the musicians get compensated for the value that they create. I'm not a futurist. I think the future is not something to be predicted, it's something to be achieved. But what we're arguing is that this technology is revolutionary and it holds vast potential to change society. Maybe this whole new platform is the ultimate job killer. Um, the biggest problems, though, have to do with governance. And any controversy that you read today is going to revolve around these governance issues. This new community is in its infancy, and unlike the internet that has a sophisticated governance ecosystem, um, 
the whole world of blockchain and digital currencies is the Wild West. It's a place of uh, recklessness and chaos and calamity. And there's a structure and a process to figure out things. Right now there's a big debate that continues about the block size. And we need a bigger block size to be able to handle all of the transactions that will, will, will be arising. And there are, big, there are big differences. There are legitimate points of view, but the problem is there's no process to be able to come up with, a, with an optimal solution. I'm hopeful, even optimistic, that this will proceed. Uh, it feels a lot like the early 90s to me. And because uh, I look around, you got all the smartest VCs, you got the smartest programmers, you got the smartest business executives, you got the smartest people in banking, you got the smartest government uh, people, you got the smartest entrepreneurs all over this thing. And that's always a sign that something big is going on. This is all about the value going to the creators of value rather than to powerful forces that capture it. And in the process, we can protect our privacy. Privacy is a basic human right, and people who say it's dead, get over it, are deeply misinformed. It's the foundation of a free society. I'm compelled most by the power of this opportunity. And um, I've been at this 35 years, writing about the digital age. I think it's a fair statement that I've never seen a technology where I thought had greater potential for humanity.